Hey guys, here with I am starting a new lecture series. In this video series, I will be trying to cover the subject called geochemistry. As you know, geochemistry is important in terms of any type of preparation, whether it is for a job oriented or in terms of entrance oriented preparation. So I will be trying to give you some important topics in geochemistry. Along with that, I will be trying to give you the book reference for that topic. If you feel this will be useful, just mention it in the comment section so we can go along with this type of video series. And for today's video, I will be covering the topic called Cosmic Abundance of Element. And for this topic, I have referred the book The Principles of Geochemistry by Mason and Moore. Welcome to my channel Success Guru and myself Panchanadam and let's get into the heading. The Cosmic Abundance of Element. So to begin with, the Cosmic Abundance of Element is the amount of substance that is considered to be present in the entire universe. So that is what the topic deals with. And on the basis of the data on the composition of the meteorites and of the solar and stellar matter, Goldsmith in 1937 compiled the first adequate table of the cosmic abundance of element and its isotopes. And for the source, what you call the data of the hydrogen and the helium and other volatile were derived largely by examining the sun and the star. The figure of most of the other elements were based on the relative abundance in meteoric materials. And these two data were joined, that is combined together with the help of the non-volatile abundant elements such as the silica. So this is how the data has been created by Goldsmith in 1937. And there is an alteration in this Goldsmith table that is by Cameron that is published as a revised table. And that is what we are going to show in the next slide. And using the more extensive and accurate data accumulated since 1937, the major future of Goldsmith abundant figures were not altered, although there are numerous differences in details. So let us see the table that is proposed by Cameron in 9. So you can see the table here that is from hydrogen to uranium, you can see here and the abundance is given in terms of percentage. So in general there is a uniformity between the relative abundance determined in the sun and in other region of the universe. The difference may be usually be explained on the basis of the original size of the stellar mass observed. The size of the stars determine the rate of the nuclear evolution and stability. As you know, the larger stars burn more rapidly than the smaller one and may develop into supernova that explodes and disappears the nuclei throughout the immediate area of the universe. Our solar system probably contains the remaining of one of these earlier stars Variation in the abundance of hydrogen and helium in the star gives evidence that they are in different stage of their evolution. While the difference in the abundance of heavy elements reflects the variation in the material that is available for the synthesis. So the table 2.6 as well, there is a figure 2.2 that, that I will be sharing in the next slide, shows the relative abundance of different elements, especially the lighter one vary considerably. An element may be hundreds or even thousand times more or less abundant than its immediate neighbor in a periodic table. So that is what explained in this graph. So you can see the graph here. This graph is from the earlier table. So what they did is they had plotted the graph according to this abundance where the left side is the abundance that is in terms of percentage and the x-axis that will be the atomic number. When the data are carefully analyzed, numerous regularities are found and they may be summarized as follows. The first regularity that we had found from this graph is that the abundance shows a rapid exponential decrease for elements of roll atomic number that is less than 40 followed by an almost constant value for a heavy elements. So you can see here this is a 40 atomic number. So from this side what you can see is a decrease in the rapid uh, decrease in the abundance of elements if you see before 40 you can see here the abundance is far far higher when compared to the abundance of uh, atomic number greater than 40 so that is what the first observation from this graph the elements of even atomic number were more abundant than those of the odd atomic number on either side and this regularity was first recognized independently by Odd in 1914 and Hawkins in 1917 and it's sometimes referred as Hoda or Kindru, right? So you can see here the even atomic number, whatever it is from helium to Fe, whatever it is, you can see here the even atomic number are higher abundance when compared to the nearby odd atomic number. And the third one 
that you can understand from this graph is that the relative abundance for elements of higher atomic number than nickel varies less than those of the elements of the lower atomic number. So you can see here the nickel element, nickel. So after that, what happens? The elements are almost nearly in the same abundance. Whereas in terms of atomic number of higher than the nickel, you can see here the variation is very very high. And the fourth observation is that only 10 elements that is the hydrogen, helium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, neon, magnesium, silica, sulfur and iron or uh, and iron all with atomic number of less than 27 shows appreciable abundance of those hydrogen and helium far out with the other way. So if you see that complete table you can see here there are 10 elements that is most dominant on this 10 hydrogen and helium is the highest of its abundance. And the last observation is that there is a pronounced abundance peak, peak at the atomic number of 26 that you can see here. So when compared to the nearby uh, elements, you can see here 26 that is iron, there is a pronounced peak. And also there are smaller peak in other uh, heavier atomic numbers. So these are some of the observations from this graph. That is what I just want to share in this cosmic abundance of element. So from this observation and the uh, data, you can simply say one thing, the regularities displayed in table 2.6 suggest that the absolute abundance of the element depend on nuclear rather than the chemical properties and the related inherent stability of the nuclei. So this is what we can get an idea about this cosmic abundance of element, right? So I group my videos according to the category they can, that you can check in the playlist. You can connect with us by mail, Facebook and Instagram and these are the links. You can support us by like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.